Hi everybody, I hope you're well. I hope that the Lord is amongst you, Lord. I pray that the Lord is in your midst, wherever you are. I pray that the spirits of the living God will just eradicate any noise, any chaos. I pray the fullness of the of the Lord will be your portion. I pray the anointing and the spirits of the living God will fall upon you wherever you are, wherever you're sitting, wherever you're moving and having your being this afternoon in Jesus' name. Thank you for gathering here with me. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you and I pray that you'll continue to share the video. I hope that you come, you are fed, you are full. I pray that you get the word and you are as excited as I am about the word of God, right? Um, I'm gonna pray. Spirits of the living God, I thank you, Lord, for this time. I thank you for today. I thank you for the word that will go forward. Let it go forward unhindered, unhinged. Father, guard my mouth. Be over me, O oh Lord. Let the spirits of the living God speak. Let it illuminate. Let it give me the word to speak. Give me the authority to speak. Give me understanding. Give me revelation. Give me understanding, O oh Lord, in everything that I will do today here. Let your words, O oh God, give honor to those that will come. And I, as well as we will honor you, O oh God, and be a testament of your living goodness, of your truth, of your light, of your marvelousness. I thank you, Lord, for being God on this day. This blessed day, it is a day that we will give the Lord thanks and break bread together and receive what you have to say in the likeliness of your spirit of, of the of the spirit of truth. And I thank you, Lord, for this time forth and forevermore. In Jesus' name. I hope you are well. Be loved. Thank you. I have the word. I don't want it to be long today. Um, but if you have your Bible, get your Bible. And let's break bread together. Um, and the reading will be taken from Luke, Luke uh, 23, Luke 23, 8 through 12. Luke 23, 8 to 12. Um, so let's dive in, right? Let's eat <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and Luke 23, 8 goes like this. And when Herod saw Jesus... He was exceedingly glad for he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracles done by him nine when he questioned with him in many words but he answered him nothing ten and the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod with his men of war set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. And and the same day Pilate Herod and twelve, sorry, and the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. Right? I hope you got that. And that's Luke 23, 8 through 12, right? And the Holy Spirit gave me this. Unless the people see signs and wonders, they believe not. Jesus is not mocked, for he has the ability to perceive a man's thought. He will not prove, he will not prove to anyone who he is because he already know their thoughts and deeds are evil and is showing of self performing would be in vain because the inward heart was not for the right thing but for but for show and tell who need who needed to see Christ's work did right so when God, when Christ, when Jesus Christ was alive and walking right amongst his brethren and the citizens, right, he showed himself to um, the folks that needed to uh, be awoken to him, to be enlightened to him, and you know, be a witness of the things that he did and demonstrated, right. So, verse eight, when um, when it says Herod, and when Herod was, and when Herod saw Jesus. He was exceedingly glad, for he was desirous to see him 
of a long season. So Herod wanted to see Christ. He wanted to see the Messiah. He was hearing these, these things and he wanted to witness it, right? He, so for, for, for a long time, he wanted to see who this Christ was, right? But he didn't until this set time, right? Um, because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracles done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words. So Herod questioned the Lord. He asked him many things, right? But the Lord did not answer him. The Lord did not give um, into what he already knew what was in Herod's heart. For the Lord already perceived the deeds of Herod. He already understand the thoughts and where it was coming from, from why he wanted to see, you know, the miracles are the questions behind. He wanted to see him in action, right? Okay. So, um, who needed to see Christ's work did? Whose eyes needed to be open? Christ demonstrate his majestic authority to. This is why a unbelieving heart will never please Christ, right? So because Christ knew the heart that Herod had, right? He knew what was on the inside of Herod, right? So he didn't have to go and, um, um, you know, do what they were asking of him, right? Because he knew it was from a mocked place. He knew it was on, from an unbelieving place because of their own vile and their own intention, right? So of their own evil intention, why they wanted to see him demonstrate his authority and his majesticness, right? Um, Herod, Herod desiring to see Christ was not from a good place. It was so he can further mock and cast down judgment for awakening the nation and releasing and setting folks free, right? So Herod longed to see Christ. He desire to see the king work right but it wasn't from a truth place it wasn't from a true place it wasn't um a good thing right he he desired to see christ because he wanted to exuberate he wanted to hand down he wanted to mock right he wanted to show his authority over christ right so that's what it means um but christ did but christ's time was not fully come for the spect for the spectacular showing right so when he desired for christ back then right to the time that he the lengthy time he was waiting to meet christ or to you know be in the presence of christ to you know demonstrate his power that time was not yet right? The set time did not come for them to meet because the Lord had so much things to fulfill. He had so much things to carry out. He had so much things to do, right? Before the set time, which is now here at this present time, as he's led to be um, stringed to the cross, right? Okay. So God's set time was, is, so God, God's set time is what will stand, not what the small g God's wants to do the creator of you and i initiate all things in order and for a set season so god creates he set everything in order for a set time for a set season right so when herod was longing because he he was seeking the lord he was hearing these things right the the jews and the scribes and the pharisees in that time in that space in that moment wanted to string up Jesus. They did all these things. They followed him. They was in the midst of um, the mix of um, nation, right? Of the believers and, un and, and the unbelievers, right? That wanted to see the charade, right? That wanted to see the, the acts, right? But the set time for Herod to be um, in the presence of the Lord was not at that time when he desired it. It's it's always, the set time is always going to be when God say, right? When God commands, when God is ready to demonstrate, right? That will be the set time for whatever he wants to manifest, right? And take place. I hope you're getting that. I'm sorry if I'm maybe going too fast. I just don't want it to be too lengthy. Um, for what men hope for or long for a thing or someone. And when he, 
and when he receive it or locate it, doesn't honor the said thing or person he desire, right? So here the Holy Spirit is saying, when he longed for Jesus Christ to be in the presence, to see the Lord, to um, see him, you know, do the miracle, right? It's not so, it wasn't from a good place, right? Because what person desire something or someone and when they get it they don't honor it they don't treasure it they don't you know show their appreciation right who does that if you're longing for something if you want something and it's it's from a truth place and you want this thing and you want to see it right if it's from a true place you're going to take care of it right whenever you do receive it whenever you do get the opportunity to be amongst or in the midst of you're going to be in awe right you're going to care for it you're going to protect it right you're going to stand in one accord aligned to it right hallelujah jesus glory right because when you are before that person your actions will align to the feeling or emotions right so there, the Holy Spirit was saying, when you are aligned to the thing that you wanted to see, you wanted to be in the midst of this thing, right? How you feel internally is going to be seen, carried out by your actions, right? So for Arid, he wanted to be in the presence of the Lord, but for the wrong reason. His, his actions is not in alignment of good, right? But of evil, right? So that's what the Holy Spirit is saying. And I hope you're getting that again. Um, when you receive, when you receive and doesn't care it or honor it, your heart is evil towards that thing or person for your own selfish nature to exploit or to show that you are more powerful in authority over this thing or person, right? So Arid, like I explained before, Arid only wanted to be in the midst because he wanted to see and he wanted to show his authority because his inwardness was evil. It wasn't from a right place where he longed to see the action of God because to them, they were mad that Jesus Christ was awakening people that, you know, they, he, he was setting them on fire. Um, when not physical fire, but fire for him. And that's why many commune. That's why many gathered, with him because they wanted to see this Christ. They they saw the things that he did. So this is why I said whose eyes that when when he was in the midst here and you know walking with the people who needed to see him did because he made sure that was carried out, right? So if ever didn't get the opportunity then to be in the midst of his his actions and his demonstration and his power, it's because it wasn't supposed to right? He wasn't supposed to be there at that time, right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, verse 12, right? Um, and the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together for before, for before they were at enmity between themselves. So Herod and Pilate, before this gathering, before this time to um, for the Lord to go and bear his cross and be hanged, right? Um, and crucified, sorry, right? Um, Herod and Pilate were not companions. They were not friends. They were not in the midst of each other. They had issues amongst their, you know, amongst themselves, right? They weren't brethren. They weren't seen eye to eye, right? So um, verse 12, right? When there is when there is grace over your life when god can when god can be seen in your when god can be seen in you the enemy will be upset which comes in forms of envy jealousy lust and hate right so when christ can be seen amongst you in you around you everything you're you're flourishing despite what the enemy thought despite what they planned were for you right it's not happening in the way that they want it to happen god is overriding their evil thoughts and their evil witchiness and their evil orchestrating of strategicness right the lord is demolishing all these things so what happens now here in verse 12 when Herod and Pilate got together, right? Now they're best, of, they're best of friends because now they're only one common denominator is Christ, right? So now 
they want to override this person. They want to come against this person. They want to make a mockery of him. So they will unite. So two enemies will unite on your behalf to destroy you. But the, but Lord, but the Lord, thy God, will not allow it to happen, right? So I hope you're getting it. For, for me, it's juicy when the Holy Spirit is giving me this revelation, right? Um, ha. Right? So when God can... When, when God can be seen in, your, in you, the enemy will be upset, which comes in forms of envy, jealous, lust, and hate. When the, Lord, when the Lord's hand is established around you, this will make two enemies join force to try to ravish war against you, right? Two individuals that dislike one another will work together to stop or try to destroy what they cannot defeat praise the lord right so we 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 as human being here we can attest to this right so you have um two mutual friends but they don't like each other right and then you now become that common person that they hate that they dislike that they just can't stand you because they don't see the hurt on you, you know, that you're going through. They can't understand why you're flourishing, why you're glowing, why, you know, things are just happening for you. And you're not, you're not, you're not a materialistic person, but you're a humble person and everything just goes and work in a, in, in one accord for you, right? They will unite to try to come against you. Those two enemies, they will try to come against you. So two enemies, my God right will get together ha huh? speak about you tear you right ha huh? yet able see try to deter you know try to bring down your character right but in inwardly they don't like each other but because you are the threat because you are the bothersome person to them they can't see you um depleting the way they desire they can't understand that so they're going to unite forces to try to come against you but the lord say fear not fear not because they cannot defeat you right when you're walking and you're aligned aligned to the power of the heavens you have nothing to worry about right you have nothing absolutely nothing to worry about and this is what the lord is saying here right so i hope you're getting it because the word of god and the revelation of jesus christ within his, his words is just refreshing it's just um something that we can stand on right it just give you that base structure you know that fullness to say yes the lord is on my side i am not forgotten right no matter who is joined together against me right they can't bulldoze god's plan right hallelujah but how can they when they this is good listen but how can they, when the Trinity is at work, my God, when the two forces of darkness, when the two forces of envy, when the two forces of lust, when the two forces of hate, when the two forces of jealousy, when the two forces of backbiting, when the two forces of darkness try to come against you, see, the Lord will annihilate them, right? They don't have no place, no ground to stand. They're standing on sinking sand, right? But how can they when the Trinity is at work? My God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, precious Lord. Hallelujah, 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 mighty God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But how can they, when the Trinity is at work, <laughs> how can your enemies be against you when you have God, you have Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit working defending you how can that stand how can their plans come to pass how how they can't they can't test you they can try yeah but it won't happen it won't work 
It won't work in the name of Jesus. It won't work, right? But how can they, when the Trinity is at work, God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, fear not when war arise against you. Once your identity is of Jesus Christ, you have all the armor and skills, tactics, and defense you to your advantage, right? <sighs> Fear not when war arise against you. Once your identity is of Christ, Jesus Christ, you have all the armor, the skills, tactics, and defense to your advantage. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and rest assured that he is your strong defense. He is your strong tower. He is your abiding city. He is your shade in anything. Rest assured you have the Trinity. Praise the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. The Lord wanted you to know that. The Trinity, you have the Trinity. Once you're under the tabernacle of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you have the Trinity all around you, right? You have the authority. You have the power. You have the skills. You have the defense. Harabosi. You have the word of God, the armor. My God. My God, my God, my God, our God, <laughs> our God, our God is that God, right? He's that God. No, nothing else, just that God, right? Luke 23, 26 through 31. So we're going to jump down to Luke 23, 26 through 31. But before doing so, I have to go to Luke 9, right? Bear with me. Luke 9. This is good. I love the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. I love the Lord. And I'm, I'm thankful. Like, I understand my calling. Like, people used to say, oh, she thinks she's too God, God, everything, God, God, our, you know, like, they think, like, no. God is not mocked, man. When you're called, I answer my call, even though I put it down and pick it up, put it down and pick it up. But now I'm on the line. I'm receptive. The frequency is live. <laughs> so Luke 9.23, right? It says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me, right? Reason why I went there, Luke 9, 23, is because of this. The Lord ain't done with you. He got more to share with you. <laughs> so then we're going to go back to Luke 23, right? And we're going to jump down to 26 through 31, right? And 26 through 31 goes like this. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one, Simon, a Syrian, coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Christ. Listen, I'm going to read it again. 26, 20, Luke 23, 26, right? And as they, lay, and as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Syrian coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. 27. And, they, and there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. 28. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves, for your children, and for your children. 29. For behold, the days are coming in that which they will... 29. 
For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren. Blessed are the barren. Those women, their wombs are not regulated, right? They're barren. And the wombs that never bear children, right? And the paps which never gave suck. 30. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. 31. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? Right? So I hope you got that, right? Um, so again, I need to read Luke 9, 23, so you get it because it goes hand in hand, right? Um, 23, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily, not sometime, daily, and follow me, right? And that's Luke 9, 23, right? All right, and let's proceed. So, um, Luke 23, 26, right? It said, and as they led him away, they laid hold upon Simon, a Syrian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus, right? So Luke 23, 26 is a methodor, meth, methodor, right? I always get that word mixed up with another word, like simile, but methodor. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's M-E-T-A-P-H-O-R, right? So that those who are the Lord's disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow him. Christ walking to his purpose, to the cross, right? That's why he came here, right? Because he knows that they, he knew that they would come, right? That was his purpose, right? To be sacrificed for us, for you, for your peers, for your generation before you and your generation to come, right? Crosses rode with Simon, the Syrian, whose identity was described, but once path was crossed. So once the Syrian and Jesus Christ path, right, intersect together, right, conjunct together, right, Jesus, Syrian, right, they meet, right, once that path was crossed, right, with Christ. Uh, path was crossed with Christ lost his identity. So once the Syrian's path was crossed with Christ, he immediately lost his identity, right? Which, which is why I said it's a methodor, right? He, he immediately lost his identity because it says one came right out of the country, Simon, who's a Syrian, right? That's, he's been described here, right? So immediately when he crossed path with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right? So it is when we all cross path, when we all get an encounter from Jesus Christ, when we all get that first, um, you know, baptism or that love or that joy, when we first got in, in that meeting place with Jesus Christ, right? Our identity, once what we once were, right, is stripped, is no longer valid, is no longer void, right? I hope you're getting that. So um, let me go back again. The Syrian whose identity was described, but once, but once paths was crossed with Jesus Christ, lost his identity and had to bear the burden of the of running into the Lord. He had to bear the burden of running into the Lord, right? Because it says here in 26. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Syrian, Simon, a Syrian coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus Christ. It's a meth methodor, right? So running into the Lord or simply meeting together at a junction, right? All right. This shows us that 
the slightest knowledge or encounter with Jesus, you will not remain the same. Right? Who can attest to that? Who can attest to that? The slightest encounter with Jesus Christ, something change. Something change. You become awoke, right? Something stripped off. Someone get a healing. Someone get revelation. Someone ha, is delivered. Ha, yarabo, see? Ha, shata, roko, see? The chains are broken. Ha, yarabo, se, kerebo, see? An. They fall on their knees and they bow before him and they say, Master. That one time they start to tear. They don't know where it's coming from. So that one path crossing with Jesus Christ the Lord, something happens. That's what it's saying here in verse 26 of um, Luke 23, right? The slightest knowledge or encounter with Jesus, you will, you will not remain the same. There will be some sort of change alteration or conversion my god this is what the holy spirit gave me despite the rumors hmm, to downplay the greatest of all despite the rumors to downplay the greatest of them all jesus the man whom great company desire to be amongst crowds of nation will forever want to know him and will seek to find him right even to this, even to his death, the mass mixed with unbelievers and believers and lovers of Christ followed him even unto death, right? Even unto death, right? I hope you're getting that. Women are unique beings, right? We are created to do we are created to carry out the task of reproduction. That's our function, right? Our common function, right? We are the carriers. Praise the Lord. That's why man for honor woman. That's why men is supposed to honor women. Just like you have some men that honor their mother, honor their sisters, but yet still will turn around and curse their baby mother. Yet still will left their baby mother to suffer with their children, right? Yet still will turn around and kill a woman, kill a child, a girl child, right? Honor woman. Because the greatest asset of them being created is from the womb. That's their task. One off. We are carriers, right? If it's not for us, how can the children, how can there be reproduction, right? How? With the help of a male, right? That burden alone is mounting. This is why there is power when female to female unite and live as one. The hidden yet, sec sec the hidden yet secured wombs Transmit frequency of compassion from one woman to the next. Right? That's why no woman not for put on no woman. No woman not for fight against another woman. Right? Because we have that common thing. Right? Along with love and our heart. Right? So I hope you're getting it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray he gives it to you. I pray this word will just... Ah! Yeah, how it is for me. Um, we must meticulously, we was meticulously thought of and framed. Read again. We must meticul we was meticulously thought of and formed and framed. Every attribute of a woman is unique, right? So when the Lord thought of us, just think about what he did right? He put men to sleep. He put a man to sleep. Right? The thought of that, right? He, he did surgery on a man, right? To bring forth a woman, right? He thought of us. He thought of us to give a company for us to be company or um, a mate to a male, right? That's why a male should honor 
his woman. Honor your spouse. Honor your wife. Honor your mother. Honor your daughters. Honor your niece. Honor them. Honor them because the Lord, he, he um, thought of them, right? The uniqueness of the frame of a woman, right, came from the Lord. That was very strategic, right? All right. I hope you're getting that. Um, we was meticulously thought of and formed and framed. Every attribute of a woman is unique. When you kill, hurt a woman, you take substance from yourself, right? Because you came from a womb, right? And I hope you're getting that. I hope the Lord enlightens you on that. In other words, you take life from your length of days, right? Jesus told the daughters of the city of peace, right? And that was when, that's verse, that's Luke 23, verse 28, when he said, But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. When shall they begin to say to the mountain, then shall they, then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us. My God, that's so deep. And to the hills, cover us. When you think of the mountains, how much bulbara and how much br br um, bricks and rocks, right? And how these things, mountains, they're so high. So for a woman, all right, to be in great pain, right? Our discomfort to say that, it takes, that's from a, that's from a, a hurtful place. Like there's, it's, it's not meaningful for me to live anymore, right? It's not worthy for me to live anymore, right? So... Jesus told the daughters of the city of peace to hold their peace and to weep for themselves and for your children. Save your tears for the days cometh when you will weep uncontrollably, right? And we can attest to that. The things that are happening to the children now, right? Where a lot of mothers are weeping, right? They don't want to live anymore. They're saying, Father, take me. Father, it doesn't make sense. I'm living. Ha. Yerebo shata. Right? Ya shata roko si. Harabo shian. But you will see. You will see. You will see. Many will be attest to this. Right? When they wish that they will say to the hills. Right? Fall on us. And to the, to the mountains. They shall begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us, right? A lot will attest to this, right? To this word, to this hurt, to this pain, right? Where they feel like, yes, I'm not worthy. I don't want to live anymore, right? All right. For the Lord, for the Lord to say such harsh saying is very telling to the time frame of today. For all the cruel and wicked things being done to the children around the world, we know tre treacherous time would come. He knew treacherous time would come. And the days when the wounds of the mothers would be weak because of the vile things to be done unto their children. And in the event of these things, mothers, family would say hard sayings, out of grief and from a place of pain which they feel for their slay children my god hallelujah jesus for it is not yet time for the apocalypse for it is not yet time for the apocalypse and the time and the times are so vain for it is not yet time for the apocalypse, but the times are so vain and dreading. How much more will it be at the great day and time? Right? So the Holy, Holy Spirit is saying, it's not yet that time. 
the time has not come yet for that dreadful destruction right but yet still we are seeing the cruel things we are seeing the malicious acts we are seeing the vile actions and cruelty right in the world amongst us happening to the children to the generation that's supposed to come up that's supposed to spring forth they're being annihilated and just destroyed right that's what the lord is saying but if we're seeing these things now in this time right now right if we're seeing it now 31 for if they do these things in the green tree what shall what shall it be what shall be done in the dry right so it's a method it's it's being um compared again right the green tree the time yet is not come for the destruction right right so it's it's okay the ground is still subtle the ground is still saturated right with potents and the soil is still wet right right the destruction hasn't come yet it's not that time but yet still we're seeing the harsh things we're 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 being witnessing we're witnessing the evil days as though it was that time we're witnessing evil things right so that's what 31 is saying right that's what he's saying here how much more will it be at that great day and time where 31 is saying what shall be done in the dry right get right with the lord you better be found in a secure place and that is only under the tabernacle of jesus christ the lord right and that's all i have that's all i have regarding luke 23 8 through 12 and we jump down to luke 23 26 through 31 and we also read luke 9 23 right so the lord is saying to you today all his followers you and i my peers out there those that are watching me those that will see me you want to take up your cross and walk with him you will bear things your identity you will no longer be remembered of such man or such woman right you become a new creature right and he had to bear his cross so did the man that crossed path with him right simon the syrian his identity was stripped right he had to bear the cross of jesus christ which is a method meta, a method bear with me with that word <laughs> right that we too will have to bear our cross right we too will have our burdens to bear we too will have to struggle right we too will be whipped and chastised for the love and the truth of our lord and savior right i hope you got a mouthful because i got a mouthful um, the Lord is just good. And I hope, you know, this blessed you today richly. I hope it richly blessed you as it blessed me. Um, and thank you for being here. Share the word. If it is doing something for you, if you're liking what I'm doing, if you're, you know, and leave a comment, which I, I tend to say this, these videos for children because I want kids to see it, you know? Um, so like it, share it. Be here with me because this is what the Lord wants me to do. And this is my purpose. And I thank you for being here, right? So I pray that you will be found in a secure place. I pray that you will take up your cross, right? And don't worry about the things that you once had because the God that is great to do all things, the, the God, the Lord of heavens, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think, is able to give you more than what you can ever imagine, right? And that's just the truth, right? There's no limits, there's no boundaries to him, right? And the father loves us. And what father doesn't give to their children good gifts, right? So I love you with the love of Jesus Christ and be blessed. Happy Saturday, happy Sabbath. And I thank you for being here with me. Wherever you are, I pray the Lord cover you and provide for you and sustain you and enlighten you and enrich you and strengthen you and heal you 
in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Be love until next. Much love. Be rooted. <laughs>